Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the ninth episode of Flowers and Friends. We are so excited to be here with you today. Our topic today is going to be nurturing by nature. What's that mean, you might be asking yourself? Yeah, so it's really fun. All three of us are bringing a different focus to this. Uh, you know, whether you're nurturing your garden, whether you're nurturing your family or your community, we are going to talk about that today. And our special guest that we have on is Christina Berrigan of Floor Society. And she's going to teach us how she's cultivated this worldwide community of florists. I am blown away. Even I, we've been behind the scenes, guys. So before we come on here, we get like... 45 minutes to really get to know each other. And so this was my first opportunity to hang out with Christina. You guys have already been spoiled to her, but I have not. So <laughs> yes. I was just gathering a little tidbit of information. Um, I want to thank everybody, first off, for being on here today. Ninth episode, we're encouraged. We're being loved on. You guys are sending direct messages. You're sending really kind comments about Bloom TV in general. So we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for passing this video around. I had a friend say, I have learned so much. So oh, good. that's everything. <laughs> that's everything. So we just want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching every single week with us. Yes. And let's go ahead and just go straight on into that intro video because it's dance time. Mm-hmm. God, I love this show. I love the energy and I love our intro because it gets us in the mood to have a really good time to enjoy. I mean, last week's show was incredible. We got to learn so much from each one of us. I really, really love the energy. We've received so many comments. Please yeah. keep writing to us. Tell us what is it that you like? What is it that you'd like to see in the future? And we want to thank yeah. you all for being here. In case you missed last week's episode, we have a, clip, a short video for you. Workshops were a way for me to teach my community the joy of living with flowers. That's what I wanted to do there. But it turned out my students were not coming to learn about flower arranging. They were, they kept coming because that was their weekly therapy. I'm going to create just little feathery petals and I'm going to work them around in a circle. And you know, by looking at this, if I put some green stems and a branch, you know, mm -hmm. by looking at it, it's a flower. And regardless of what my husband says, because he doesn't get, <laughs> he doesn't get abstract. Okay. He wants to know. Well, what is it? What flower is it? I would say a seed was planted in my heart to learn how to grow cut flowers to bring others joy. And I love using the word joy a lot because that is my mom's name. Her name yeah. was Joy. And uh, I, I named my business after her Blooming Joy Flower Company. And so Anna and I connected too with her, the joy of living with flowers like it was meant to be, meant to be. And so in 2018, I was like, I'm going to start a cut flower garden. I don't know how to grow cut flowers, but I'm going to dive into everything I can to learn about it. <laughs> oh, so, awesome. Yes, this is what I love about Bloom TV. They have taken the flower and they have brought all of us together from around the globe and many more people are coming and they are bringing us together through the flower and we all have different points of view. Like here I am, like I love to grow cut flowers and nurture the earth and like I talk about that endlessly. And then you have you know, Dion, the painter, you know, she talks about how she paints the flowers. And Anna, I love that you teach people how to create these floral designs, you know, easy enough that everyone can do this and enjoy the flower. And so last week was really fun getting to share our stories. It was absolutely. And what I can't get off of my brain is a workshop in person. 
Where, yeah. <laughs> like after seeing your videos, I'm like, oh, here I am in my pretty dress and I'm walking through Kara's cut garden and I'm yes. clicking and I'm, I've got my baskets. Here we all are. And then we can go to the table and Anna can just show us how to arrange them. And then I'm like, <laughs> after that, ladies, come on over here to the table where we're going to paint and we're all going to dance with our brushes. And I have it all envisioned. And I yes. think that's what Bloom is doing as we kind of mm-hmm. create this movement for what really feels really powerful. I think that like, if I'm, I can go click on Bloom and I can learn something, but I'm also entertained um, even with, it's just been one of those things, A, that I'm so happy to be a part of, but I'm learning so much. And the feedback from everybody, like I mentioned earlier, has been huge about mm-hmm. what they're learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I received so many emails, messages and everything like, we love what you guys are doing for the flower industry and not only for the flower industry. I mean, it's for the whole world because we're bringing joy, hope, happiness. I mean, yeah. all these things that we're really missing in life because this is a joyful channel. That's what you get out of Bloom TV. You get inspiration, you get motivation. It's all good, good, good. (laughs) Absolutely. And speaking of, like I said, before we went on here, I got to meet our guest, you know, and and learn a little bit about her. Anna, tell us us a little bit more about Christina. Yes, it, it's so amazing because last week we were, we were sort of talking about community a little bit. And that's why we decided, you know what? We need to invite Cristina Barragan. She is the leader in creating community. She is so talented. She is so dedicated. Wow. She has a wedding decoration business, but she's grown beyond that because from her experiences, from being in a place where nobody was being able to share their knowledge with her, she decided I need to make it easier for every florist outside. So Christina created the Flare Society. And well, let's invite Christina because you guys are gonna love her. (laughs) Hello. Hi. Hello. (laughs) Welcome, Christina. Welcome, Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much for having me. It's seriously an honor to be here with all you wonderful ladies. You're amazing. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a joy to have you here on uh, our talk show as well as a part of Bloom TV. And I'm really thrilled to hear what you have to say today. So thank you for joining us. I know you are a busy, busy lady. <laughs> Totally. (laughs) Absolutely. And Christina, you know, you personally hold a really special place in my heart too, because because of you, I met Anna. And like, it's kind of been this whole like cycle. Like, would I have met Anna? Maybe, but we met because of you and this community that you have put together for Flora. So thank you. (laughs) I love that. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, you're not the first one to say that. There's been a lot of connections that have happened because of a collaboration of some sort, either a summit Mm -hmm. or, you know, a bundle or something that we've done in the past or just Mm -hmm. crossing paths on our website and community and things like that. So I love hearing stories like that. It truly warms my heart. I love it. (laughs) So amazing, really. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do for, for the forest community. You are Great. Guys, you're going to love her. (laughs) Just like Karen and I do, just like Dion just started too, and Monica. I mean, everybody loves Christina because you're so wonderful. (laughs) I think it takes a little, I have to add here though, because I really feel like it takes a little, it takes courage to do what you're doing. And I, and I want to take just a minute to go, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're pioneering, kind of have you ever have you ever been called a pioneer in the floral industry christina honestly i don't know (laughs) i hear a lot of i mean lots of people know me for specific things like oh that's you you need systems talk to christina you need this Mm -hmm. talk to her she's a teacher you know so it's it's interesting to see how i'm perceived in different communities and different ways and i i love it because i feel like i embody all of those things but there's not like this one name for me, I think. I think it's just, I love to do it all. I'm multi-passionate. I'm a school teacher. As many of you know, it's been my life, just passion to be an educator and to be able to 
just pass that over into my business has been a great joy. And, and now, you know, now that we're back in school again, it's, it's really ignited even a bigger passion of mine to bring flowers into my classroom. And so it's oh. funny how it's like one went this way and now it's going this way. And now it's just all meshing together. Um, because of where I am in life today, you know, I'm a mom, I have a toddler that's starting school this year. And so, you know, I want these opportunities and experiences to be available to her and everybody else. And so it's just, yeah, life, life really does change everything you do. It's like you, you're in a season of life and then literally the next year you'll be doing something else. And I find that so beautiful to, to, to be able to change and adapt. And mm -hmm. we've been through the most insane two years, you know, these past two years have been really hard for all of us. And yeah. so having that just adaptability and being able to move with the seasons and the seasons in your life, I think is something we all need to embrace and not be afraid of it. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the best way to describe how I'm perceived. <laughs> no, no. And I see that because I'm just meeting you, but I'm seeing that you're taking a step to better the community and like you're bringing flowers into your classroom and to your schools. And I, I, if I reflect back, I have a regret of not asking my grandmother more about her cut garden or like what yeah. about flowers. And so if I could go back to being eight or nine or 10 years old, yeah. there is so much I could have learned, but I didn't even think to ask. Do you know what I mean? So I love, yeah. and I think that's a common denominator with everybody on the screen right here and yeah. with Bloom TV. They all want, everybody, we all want to educate about flowers and the benefits. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that you're doing it with kids because I use, I started teaching flower workshops to kids actually, because my belief is that if you plant the seeds in them, they will stay with them forever. Yes. When they grow up, flowers will be a part of their life. But now it's like nurturing flowers, nurturing the earth. So that is so beautiful, Christina. We'll have to invite you again. So yeah. you can tell us about how that project is going. Yeah. And you know, it's also flowers are just very therapeutic. Um, my mom, she was diagnosed with breast cancer about 10 years ago. And flowers, her helping me in my business was therapy for her. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's, wow. she's good now. She's, you know, cancer free and, and misses it. She watches my daughters now, so she's not able to help me as much, but <laughs> our kids today need therapy. They need these experiences. They need to be heard. They need to feel loved. And so me bringing this concept to this, to the classroom for them to grow something from a seed and learn about how to do that and the entrepreneurial side of things is going to be an experience they'll never forget because they're going to get that therapeutic experience first and foremost. Um, they're they're going to learn to be disciplined. They're going to have, um, you know, experiences with all sorts of aspects of a cut flower garden and even herbs. And we're going to do all kinds of things. I'm so excited about this. You guys. Um, I can't wait to do it. And, and it's just, I look back at what, what our kids have been through these past couple of years. And it's been insane, you know, just distance learning, um, just recent current events that are affecting them and teachers all around the world. Um, it's truly a passion for, I get so emotional yeah. because, you know, our, and our you're kids, making me emotional too. Oh, our kids, our kids <laughs> need this and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something I can't wait to cultivate. And um, I know it's going to be great. So. Yes. And <laughs> well, Karina, you know, yeah. You are cultivating something within these kids that they may not have any, uh, may not be exposed to, you know, unless, you know, a parent yes. wants to garden right. with the kids, you know, they totally. may not be exposed to this. So you are showing them this life and uh, right. they may be a grown adult one day and they may be yes. like, I don't remember when I was younger and yeah. we did this garden at school. Maybe I should <laughs> just try again. You know, you yeah. never know how, <laughs> how long it may take that seed to grow. Uh -huh. But it may grow eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And these are lifelong skills, right? Like mm -hmm. lifelong skills that they can apply, like you're saying. And I love that. And I think it's just a beautiful concept. And I hope that, you know, me bringing that to the classroom. And of course, like I was saying earlier, um, we were chatting before the show and I'm like, Kara, I'm going to be using you so yes. much because you have all this knowledge that I need. And I, I don't have a green thumb. Yes. <laughs> Believe it or not. I work with flowers forever, but I, <laughs> yeah. I, I need to have that discipline myself like my mom does. And um, 
I just, I'm excited for that and cultivating a community in our school because mm -hmm. flowers bring people together. Just like this show. I love that you call it flowers and friends. Like it's yeah. so perfect because it's exactly what flowers do. You know, we're all connected at the root with this common interest, mm -hmm. but just the, the doing of growing and creating and designing, it brings mm -hmm. us together in that common, you know, interest and discipline. Mm -hmm. I like to call it, it's like, Flowers are like karate, okay? Like <laughs> you, you learn a discipline in the making and you learn a lot of lifelong skills with it as well. So I think that um, this is, I'm just really excited to bring this to life with all the help of you guys and also other people in our community who have already reached out and, and decided to, to guide me <laughs> somehow. I'm, and I'm sure you're going to inspire so many, like you've inspired with this community for yeah. flowers that you've created. I'm sure this is going to inspire so many everywhere. <laughs> so I would really like to know how you began in oh. this flower world. Yeah, well, it's... It, yes, please it, it's tell all, all the good stuff. Oh, yeah. My story, <laughs> my story is, is, is pretty common. I think a lot of us have started in this way, but I started in the flower world at the same time that I started teaching my teaching career. I was only 21 years old. I was a kid. Okay. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. Let me just say that right now. So if you feel like that right now, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have a business background. I had no background in flowers or design. And so it just kind of fell into my lap and as the years went on, and this is back in 2005, you guys, okay? Uh, 2005, this is a time of no Instagram, <laughs> no right. YouTube, no workshops, nobody was sharing. Um, it, I was like one of the few florists in the area. There wasn't even a, a lot of us out there. And so uh, just kind of in, put yourself in those shoes, you know, having to learn everything from trial and error and experience. And so that was me the first five years of my business, making so many mistakes, expensive ones, um, and just taking those experiences to really create what I have today. And I still have not stopped learning. And I'm going to say that again. I have not stopped learning. Okay. I am That's still good. nurturing my soul with education all over. And it's not just florist education, but it's personal development. It's all sorts of things that help me grow into who I am today and who I want to become, you know, because we never stopped learning anything. Mm -hmm. And so while that was happening, I was also teaching full time. And so it came, there came a, probably in like year seven or eight, it was bonkers. I was doing over a hundred weddings a year. Wow. I was trying to teach full time during the day, then coming home to do design work and business and proposals and consultations, like all of this. And I'm only like mid twenties at this point, no idea what I'm doing again. Um, <laughs> so imagine that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I knew it came to a point where I'm like, I need to figure out a way. I had no team. I, it was just my mom and I, and a few family members helping here and there, but it really forced me to systemize. And that's the biggest thing that I can tell our community is that if you are still on a hamster wheel, doing the same thing over and over, feeling like you're never catching up, it's time to create systems. It's time to streamline your process. It's time to start growing a team. Because when I did all of those things, life got easier and mm -hmm. profitability got higher. And I was able to still continue teaching in the classroom because of that. Otherwise, I would have had to give in one up, you know, and and I wasn't ready to get, leave the classroom. I, I love my right. career so much. Mm -hmm. um, and so now people still ask me, have you retired teaching? I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still, why? Because I have these things in place that don't require me to be in it all the time. Like I don't have to be in my business a hundred percent of the time. I, I love that. that help me, you know? Yeah. So no, no. I love that you make that point because you know, you get asked, wait, Christina, yeah. how do you do all of this? How do you possibly do it? And it makes other people go, I can never do all the things, but you are so wise to implement the steps and the mm -hmm. systems. And I think a lot of business owners, they fail to get those things yeah. in place and then they mm -hmm. hit overwhelm and then they get stuck and then they kind of retreat backwards. So I love that your, your goal for education and the two 
really collaborate and they complement one each other so beautifully. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mesh. <laughs> yes. yes. So Christina, so you not only work full time as a, a teacher, which is amazing. You also <laughs> have this thriving wedding business, but then also you have started this worldwide network, uh, educational platform for florists called Floor Society. Tell me about that, how you started it, why, Beautiful. We would love to know more. Yeah. So Fleur Society has kind of the same origins. You know, it was it was created out of a place of need. Mm -hmm. um, I found myself, you know, getting emails and DMs from people. This is when Instagram existed like seven years ago. <laughs> and people are like, where can you learn from you? And so it just grew from there. And so I was like, I need to bring my knowledge and my love of teaching into my business and into our industry because so many people need help. And I don't want them to struggle like I did for so many years of not having a team, not having support, not having profitability. And I share this in my community all the time. I was not profitable those first five years. I didn't make a dime, but I was so burnt out and I knew something had to change. And so I look at people today and a lot of people in our mentorship program tell me the same kind of stories and struggles. And I'm like, lucky for you, you have the resources and we're here to help. You know, this is, this is going to be a shortcut through all of that mess that you don't have to endure. Um, so that is where Fleur Society grew and it's become this passion project of mine also because we do a lot of community uh, building. We do events. You ladies have been part of those things, summit bundles. I mean, we, we love it. We love to empower our community and provide resources so that they don't need to just spin their wheels all day long right. trying to figure this out. And you're not alone. You know, we want you to feel like you're not alone because you're not and mm -hmm. supported, which is so important to, to make a successful business happen. Why, Absolutely. Why don't you tell our viewers about the bundle that's coming? Yes. Up? What is yes. this bundle thing I keep <laughs> hearing about, Christina? Oh, my goodness. The bundle is so, so exciting. It's a resource. This is our third one coming, you guys. Okay. So it's a resource um, that has 25 different educators. As you can see here, a lot of them are designers. A lot of them are creative entrepreneurs. Many of them you know. I'm sure you've heard of them. Um, incredible people that are just people that I resonate with that are just like me want to give back who are always willing to help in some way. And they're putting their resources into this little bundle. It's 25, a mixture of 25 courses, memberships, uh, resources, guides, templates, all sorts of things covering a range of topics for business and design. And it's, we're doing it for 97 bucks, you guys. So not only do we want to provide education? We want to make it super affordable. And so you're getting, I think we tallied it up. If you paid retail for each of these things, it was over $3,500. So you're getting it for a hundred bucks, like 97 bucks, right? And yeah. this is launching on Monday. You ladies are part of it, which is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so for thank you for being part of this. Yeah, no, thank you for being, thank you for saying yes. And that's another thing. I always like to, to thank our educators because not a lot of people say yes to these things. And I, and I do want to put that out there because again, girl coming up from a place where nobody wanted to help me, it, it was a real thing where people just wanted to keep to themselves and not share knowledge and were afraid to tell their secrets and whatnot. There yeah. are no secrets guys. It, everything's out there these days. Like, but why not <laughs> to get, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Instead of letting someone waste five hours YouTubing and Googling their way to, mm -hmm. to some knowledge, we can share it in a much easier and affordable way. And so that's mm -hmm. what, what I love about our community is that they're always so willing yeah. and giving. And I'd like to, if you can share a little bit more, because um, most people will think this is only for florists, but it's mm -hmm. not. Tell us a little bit about that. Totally. Yeah. No, only, let me think. It was... 10 of those resources are design related mm -hmm. and 15 are, can be applied to any business. So yes. our bundles are diverse in the sense mm -hmm. of it's not just for floral designers, it's for business creatives, anyone who is trying to grow a profitable business. These are all things you can apply. And let's just, let's be honest here. Even the design stuff, who was, who would not want to learn how to do design? <laughs> like, right. Yes. right. <laughs> like you can learn how to do an arrangement in your home, you know, and gift yes. it to somebody or just have fun with flowers. There's, there's a little bit in there for everybody. And at least 
if you just buy it for one resource, you've already like made your money back. Like really it's, it's, it's a no. And where do they, where do they do all of this, Christina? Direct everybody that might be listening. Cause you're getting some fabulous comments over here. You're getting a lot oh, of love about you. the price. Yeah. Totally. Well, like I know, but I think Bloom TV is going to be sharing a link on Monday because we launch on Monday and I would love mm -hmm. for um, Monica to share this with you guys. She's amazing. She's going to have something special for you all in the bundle as well. Um, so there's going to be several links that they are going to be going out on Monday when we when we go live. So just stay tuned for those. And tell everyone it's only going to be for sale for five days, right? You five can only days. get this for five days and that's it. That's never it. goes on sale again. And never it goes away. And the reason here's the reason why it goes away. And there's, there's reasons for why we do this and for you to get access within 30 days is because we want you to take action. How many times have you purchased mm -hmm. something and you never look back? Like you never do anything yeah. with it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want you to take action. We want you to download everything right away. And we want you to take advantage of this because a lot of these co are course creators that can't, we, we can't offer that offering forever if they're offering it for five times the amount somewhere else. You know what I mean? So they're, exactly. they're doing us a favor and giving us such a great deal, literally a dollar. <laughs> if you think about it, it's like all divided, it divides down to a very low price. Um, and so we can honor that for five days. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Wow. So if people want to get this link, they can actually sign up for Bloom TV's uh, newsletter and they're going to be sending out the link to this. Bloom bundle. Yes. You just go to Bloom TV. Dot com. You can subscribe there, add your email in there. So, That's wonderful. Listen. Christina, thank you so much for coming thank on you. here and just sharing your knowledge and being courageous enough to pioneer. You know, you see what I love about business owners in this way is that they see that there's a need for something. Mm -hmm. And you, I love when you said you're still learning. Well, yeah, you are. Yeah. Isn't that a blessing that we still get to learn something new every day if we open our eyes up to this? Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. And, and, and I think we all need to embrace that. Don't be embarrassed to feel like you're still learning because you're, mm -hmm. yeah. we're all still learning. We're all still investing in ourselves and our businesses. It, it, there's no way that we could just learn something and stay there forever. Like you'll be mm -hmm. stagnant. Your business will yeah. be stagnant. Your knowledge will be stagnant and you will stop developing as a human, you know? So it's important to always embrace that change and wherever you are in your life and, and, and don't be afraid to invest in yourself, whatever. Yeah, that's absolutely. Like you. Totally. And there's a really, uh, a question I'd like to ask from our viewers. Somebody's asking, and I'd like you to explain, is the course going to be recorded? This is not a live course. This is not something that's going live. Can you explain a little bit, Christina? What, yeah, what the are actually getting uh -huh, the bundle. Yeah, the bundle is 25 different resources. Some of them are downloads. Some of them are video trainings. Kara is actually doing one that's live. Mm -hmm. So you can attend live or watch the replay later. Um, some of them are just, you know, you get them. It's instant access to everything. So if it's a course, you you literally sign up and you get access to the courses. Uh -huh. um, but you, you do have access to download everything in 30 within 30 days and then you mm -hmm. have it forever you can mm -hmm. revisit forever as long mm -hmm. as you want thank what you a so great much. deal well mm -hmm. speaking of learning lots of things our girl kara over here has learned a lot of things having a garden and every single week she pops on she does a little segment and i'm like taking notes because i think everybody would has a secret passion for having their own cut garden at their home no even if they're have a little patch of grass somewhere. So Kara, what are you going to talk about with us today? Yeah. So mm -hmm. our focus flower of the week, I always like mm -hmm. it to be what's blooming at my farm right now. And, you know, just because I live on a farm, like, you know, if you have a backyard garden, this could be blooming in your garden too. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about sunflowers. And I think it's kind of universal. Most everybody knows, you know, what a sunflower looks like. Most of the time they're yellow and super happy. Although I will tell you, there's some purple sunflowers out there. They're pretty cool looking. Get out. <laughs> yeah, there is. I did is. not know that, Kara. Wow. Yeah, there is. There is. So I wanted to tell you how we use sunflowers on our farm. So even though I'm a cut flower grower, and yes, I grow cut flower sunflowers, we actually use sunflowers to really cultivate our land. 
and our community of farm animals that we have on our farm. So real quick, I'm gonna play you just a one minute clip of my farm and a sunflower field that is just starting to go into bloom right now. And then I'm gonna come back and talk about it. Wonderful. Sunflowers aren't just a pretty flower on our farm. We grow a huge sunflower field every year, just like this that's in bloom right now. And it's specifically to help cultivate our land and to feed our farm animals. For big sunflower fields just like this, we use sunflowers that do drop pollen because we let these grow up, bloom, we let the flower heads go to seed, and we actually dry the seeds and feed them right back to our farm animals. Our chickens love sunflower seeds, and our goats really love the leaves on the sunflower stalks. Another fun fact that you may not have known is sunflowers are planted and used to help clean up toxins, chemicals, and pollutants from our environment. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> That's yes. incredible, Kara. So for many years now, my husband and I have planted large sunflower fields. And the purpose of these fields, like the video you just saw, was actually sunflowers and corn mixed together. And it was just really like two days ago, the first sunflower heads uh, started blooming. So if you follow me on Instagram in about a week from now, they're all going to be in bloom in there. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> But we specifically grow this area so we can dry the corn and dry the sunflowers and it's food to feed back to our farm animals. And we also have honeybees on our property. And so this particular mm -hmm. field that you saw, these sunflowers drop pollen. And of course, the, our honeybees absolutely love that. And uh, I'll tell you a, a story of, of a mistake that I made my first year as a cut flower grower. I didn't know this. So <laughs> there are two types of sunflowers. There are sunflowers that drop pollen and there are sunflowers that don't drop pollen. Oh. And when you're trying to grow cut flower sunflowers, it's better to grow the sunflowers that don't drop pollen. Otherwise, okay you might make a flower arrangement full of sunflowers. You know, if you have a guest coming over and you may put it on your pretty white tablecloth and the next day it's all yellow because all the pollen has dropped all over your table. Oh and, uh, no. Oh something no, Something you learned <laughs> as a uh, first year cup flower girl. I was like, oh, well that's a little embarrassing. <laughs> so there are a uh, better type of sunflowers to grow for cut flowers. And uh, we, we grow them all on our farm because Sunflowers is just a really nourishing flower. They're often used in uh, disasters where maybe oil has been spilled. Like there, some, some kind of toxin is in the environment because the whole sunflower plant can actually absorb these toxins and they're used to help clean up the environment, which I think is really cool. That is amazing. And are they edible? Yes, yes, you, yes. I've heard the entire sunflower plant is edible, although I will say I've never eaten the whole plant, but Just I have eaten sunflower seeds. <laughs> Get out. Sunflower seeds is the only thing I knew was edible, and I have plenty of those in bags around my baseball community home here. But I'm like, you can eat the whole thing, You the whole thing, the stems. Uh, the stems. I, I've, heard, I've heard you can. I'm not as well versed on that. Yes. I don't know about the seeds, but Prove I will it. tell you this. I've learned a lot about edible flowers just being on Bloom TV, so I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you could. <laughs> I'm learning so much about sunflowers. I have a whole new respect for them, and I'm I'm listening to you and looking at your videos, and I just think, Kara, do you just jump out of bed and want to run out to the garden and see what bloomed overnight? It's got to be magical every morning. I do. I mean, I, I wake up every day and I walk with my coffee around the garden and go see what is in bloom. And actually right now my cut flower sunflowers are starting to come into bloom. And I wish I had one with me, but it was kind of a crazy morning this morning. But let me just tell you something real quick. So I've told you about the marshmallow trick. Oh, yes. yes. I've told you about the wiggle test. The wiggle test. 
we have a sunflower like test sort of. Um, so, you know, if you're growing cut flower sunflowers, if you have just one petal sticking up, all you need, like you have this and you have one petal sticking up, you can cut that sunflower and bring it inside and that sunflower will continue to open inside of your house. You don't have to wait till it's full and bloom. And it's actually better if you don't wait okay. that long because uh -huh. you know, the pollinators will have gotten to it and that decreases the base life. So just so you know, if you have one petal sticking up saying hi, you can cut it. Oh, <laughs> okay, so how long are they going to stay bloomed? Like once you bring them in, like Anna has a, I can't wait to see what Anna's going to do back there. <laughs> Look at all that beautiful. But how long do they really stay bloomed? For example, I have hibiscus outside. I get one day and they're gone. Yes. Oh, what about unless right hibiscus is very hard to keep longer than just one day um sunflowers when i cut it at this stage i've had this certain type of sunflowers last two weeks for me mm -hmm. it does depend on the type of sunflower that is grown well i am completely and totally inspired and i'm going to tell you guys so much that when christina said we got to keep learning because i can tell you right now i do not know the best way to paint a sunflower but I am motivated by your gardens and I'm motivated by the arrangements I've seen Anna and, you know, other florists that I follow now from Bloom TV are posting sunflowers and I'm really inspired by that. So we decided that this would be the flower focus. And I said, ladies, I don't paint sunflowers. <laughs> like, I'm a little intimidated. One is that they're very warm colors. And if you followed my work, you know that I like pinks and reds. And, you know, I like blues and stuff. So not that I don't think that the flower is absolutely gorgeous and I'm learning more about the benefits and how it actually helps your farm. Mm -hmm. It's not that I, it's not that it's, there's something that I have resisted and maybe it's because my insecurity didn't feel like I could do it justice. That's kind mm -hmm. of what I'm, you know, here to admit. Mm -hmm. So on Wednesday night, I have an online community and I said, I'm going to try it tonight. I'm going to go live and I'm going to have my own community walk me through step by step by step mm -hmm. on how to do this. And I had a lot of people saying, Dion, do this and Dion, try this and sunflowers this. I learned so much. I even learned a little bit about why Van Gogh painted sunflowers. If you are familiar with Van Gogh, mm -hmm. he had a whole series of sunflowers that really made him famous. And when he passed away, people were bringing sunflowers to his grave and placing them all over. And I did a little education and I found out that they're a, they're a symbol of gratitude. And who doesn't love that? Mm -hmm. Right? Love Loyalty, that. gratitude, faith. Um, and so after I did a little education in the last couple of days, I just want you to know that I'm feeling really confident about what I could paint. So I actually have all of the colors out that I created here the other night, and I'm going to paint another flower with you guys today mm -hmm. really quickly, so um, be patient with me, but I'm going to scoot this up. I'm going to move myself out of the frame, and at any point, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, what colors I'm using, please always ask things in the comments, you guys. This is a talk show, and mm -hmm. you, my friends watching, are included in this talk show, so Ask away, I'm an open book, um, but I'm gonna scoot back. And you can see here that I started with my leaves and then I started adding my big, chunky, masterful blooms that, um, and then, so I'm gonna scoot back. What I found to be the best brush, anytime you're gonna paint petals that have a point is an angled brush. This is a three quarter inch angled brush mm -hmm. and it works really well. The key to getting, and uh, the key to getting a, a look that looks very professional mm -hmm. is going to be loading your brush with multiple colors at the same time. So mm -hmm. um, what I noticed in some of the sunflower images, especially from the Van Gogh, is that he started with a darker background, meaning colors like burnt umber, burnt sienna, and more of a mustard color. Mm -hmm. So... This is so easy, you guys. So if you're shaking your head saying, I would never do this. I want you to know, yes, you possibly definitely can. So I am just going to do easy. See, you just do easy, easy. Create a circle in the center. Mm -hmm. Looks very juvenile at first. And it's going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cover all of that up. But mm -hmm. I'm going to start with like the double layer. I'm going to do the bigger okay. ones in the back that are darker. 
Okay. And then as I come into the center, I'm going to do lighter and I'm going to do every other. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a line here and just keep going around. And you really can't mess it up because I found that out. Uh, this is my very first painting where I've done sunflowers. Um, uh, very first. I can't so, believe that yeah, either. I can't believe that so either. <laughs> I promise I wouldn't lie that I also having the having my community online with me the yeah. other night made me feel right. so much better about what I was doing. And they said, Dion, mm -hmm. do this and and Dion, do this. But I'm going to ask the audience. I'm going to ask everybody in the comments right now. If you know why Van Gogh painted sunflowers as opposed to to the other flowers that were definitely more uh, popular in the 1800s. I'm gonna see if anybody knows the answer. Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> I don't either. Well, let's see if anybody comes up with it. But you see how I'm just doing this repetitive motion? Remember the when I was a guest on here for the first episode, it was just the same repetitive, uh, and, and mm -hmm. you, can tilt your, you can tilt your canvas. The easiest uh -huh. thing is picking it up, tilting it around, but what I'm going to do, just to show you, rather than going all the way around, mm -hmm. I'm going to load now the lighter colors. Mm -hmm. So I have a yellow, okay, and an off-white. It's a tight. It's an off-white, and I'm loading them on my brush at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go right in the center of those, and I'm going to make this one shorter. Mm. Oh, so pretty! Oh my, this one's what? shorter. The, well, the question you asked, was it because they were more like affordable flowers that everyone can get? That's a really great answer, Christina. And you're very close. Common. Um, I would say that's, it's, it's probably part of it, but he wanted something that wasn't as refined. He liked okay. that it was a, easier to find a cash. It was considered kind of a casual flower, um, but it was also something that there was an abundance of and so nobody mm -hmm. wanted it it wasn't exclusive mm -hmm. um, and i think that's what he loved about it and i when he wow. when, after he passed away his paintings became more and more famous because of that so i, I didn't that. know any of this and i can thank all of you guys <laughs> kind of pushing me off you know pushing me mm -hmm. out there um because who doesn't love to learn something new i mm -hmm. i feel a sense of it. excitement when I get to learn something new and mm -hmm. um, and absolutely paint something new. So I'm just going to keep going around like that. You want to make sure that the center sometimes, um, Kara, have you found that the, like in this one, the way I uh -huh. describe this, the way I describe this one in the bottom is that it's been open longer, right? Like right. The, the honeybees, everybody, yes. they've, what's mm -hmm. the right words? What word am I trying to say? The poly pollination? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're on the right track there. Yes, yeah, I see that because actually in real life, like real sunflowers, the little circle that you did in there, like that's really what they look like once the bees have gotten a hold of them. I love that. And, you know, I love that Van Gogh used the sunflowers, even though they were very common. It was almost groundbreaking, maybe that he did. And what's interesting about the sunflowers is I didn't say this in my segment, but sunflowers are often used to break ground because they have a deep tap root. And so if you have a ground that hasn't been worked, that needs some work, people often plant sunflowers to help start working that ground and cultivating it. So sunflowers are truly spectacular in mm. that even though they're so common, they have so many purposes in nature and really cultivating our earth. Well, I feel like I should definitely Perfect. name my painting after Christina because that is exactly what she's doing. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to call this that. one Christina's Garden. because I'm going to buy that painting from you. <laughs> no, you're not. I'll give it to you, but that's awfully it's sweet. beautiful. But I, I just, this is kind of my own, um, in, you know, reflection of what you're doing and how you're inspiring your oh community, my, my friend. Thank you. You know, can can I invite you to do a painting lesson with my students? Because we did art last year and they loved it. I would I, love it. Yes and yes and, and, and three or four more yeses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you for letting me paint with you all, you guys. And I just want to encourage anybody if I can do this, you can, because this is my very first one. So, um, oh, God. I'm Dion, 
Yes, Someone in the audience wrote in Spanish and is asking me to translate. She's from Spain and she's saying, my other passion is painting. When she opened up her flower shop, she started doing her own um, cards in black and white. But you have inspired her to lose the fear and get the brush out. So thank you very much. Thank you for that message. I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. We all do very much. And if it's the the only thing I can do today is to inspire you to pick up a brush and get some paint on something. It doesn't even have to be a canvas, but play in the paint, my friends. It's 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 so rewarding. Love it. Oh, well, thank you Anna? so much, Dion. Oh, this has you, been Tara. fabulous. And I think Miss Anna has some tips for us on how to arrange sunflowers. <laughs> Yes, definitely. I love it. I love it. And okay, first, my first flower tip today is to always put an apron when you're working with flowers because they will stain your clothing. And actually, there are a lot of natural techniques where you can stain um, cloth mm -hmm. with flowers. So it's really hard to remove the stains. So always put an apron. And well, one of the reasons I love flowers so much is because they allow me to bring the seasons into my house. I love being able to bring nature inside my house. And for me, some flowers are like the symbol of summer. They're so white, they're so yellow, they're so happy. Yellow is my favorite color because of that, because it brings joy, it brings happiness. And we live in a fast paced world where we're always running and we eventually end up like, I can't believe we're in July almost. Where has time gone? And I always tell people, if you bring flowers, seasonal flowers to your life, you can take a pause and be like, no, time is not flying because I remember I had daffodils in the winter. And then vernacular season came in the spring and I enjoyed them for weeks. And now sunflower season is starting. So it helps you like pay attention to time and not think that it's actually going really fast. So I love bringing yeah. seasonal flowers to my life and I invite you to do that. You can get different flowers every week of the year. And, and it will really lift you up like, oh, Summer, I'm so happy and stuff like that. So do it, really. Okay, so I have this base that I prearranged because I wouldn't have the time to do it. Can we show them the pictures of how I started it? It has um, chicken wire. And if you see, there's a penny in there. <laughs> Why and the penny? Why? Yeah. Because copper is a, I'm, I'm not sure if I will say it right, fungicide? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Oh. Okay. And it kills bacteria. And oh. some flowers are kind of, they start to rot really easily, their stems. So with the copper penny, it helps kills bacteria so the flower lasts longer. Well, and thank I, you for that. I did not know a thing about copper and I didn't have no clue. Oh, you got some big and they say you can do it with most flowers, but I actually only use it with some flowers and it actually helps. Mm -hmm. It helps. It's like those miracle things. And I love some flowers with the jello center. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have the ones with the black center, but mm -hmm. I like this ones better, like for the end of summer mm -hmm. and early summer. I prefer the ones that are all jello. Mm -hmm. So, I already did uh, put some Sweet Williams and Ireland Bells. Why? Some flowers can sometimes be like very tricky to put in a vase. And since, since I'm trying to help you do it in an easy way, if you can fill your vase with bushy flowers like the Sweet Williams and then give it some movement with Ireland Bells, it's gonna be so easy to insert your sunflowers. You will not have to wire them. I don't like wiring my flowers. I think it cuts their lifespan. So I, I try to not put anything or damage them. I just oh, let me get my papers. I just look at the stem and see. Okay, 
-hmm. If I put it like this, it's going to look downwards. I want mm -hmm. it to look upwards because I want people to be able to see the flower. So I measure first, always measure your flowers. Oh, I'm going to use a yellow one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yes. But it's the same. You always need to look at the shape of your flowers. Mm -hmm. This one's facing that way. So I'm going to invert how I place it. Instead of putting it like this, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it facing up. And because I already have so much stuff, it will help it stay and it will not move. And I'm not using any floral foam. It's just the chicken wire and the rest of the flowers that I have. And, and that's for me the way, always measure your flowers, cut them at an angle mm -hmm. and just move between um, your base flowers mm -hmm. that you find up using Sweet Williams and Arlen Bells. We grow them locally here in Baja California where I'm at. And I love being able to use local flowers that are actually in season, help the agricultures and all the people working in the fields. And they just look so pretty. They just mm -hmm. look so summery. Yes, Anna, so, so the chicken wire, uh -huh. I, I have a question. I see yours is green. Is there a certain type of chicken wire I should be using? Well, the green chicken wire rots um, not as fast as, mm -hmm. as the other one. And I like to reuse at my house. I like to reuse and reuse and reuse everything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So this, this has a really small, it's coated. I don't know uh -huh. what, but it will not rot. And it okay. will last. Actually, I've had this one, I've had it in this base for more than a year. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so I always have my bases ready to just add them flowers. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do with the sunflowers is start. First, I will put them very tight, close to the to the base, and then I will start start playing with different depths. Mm -hmm. So, for those that aren't in your zone, Anna, for those that are, let's say, in my zone, or Karen, Karen and I are both seven, but let's just say yeah. someone is in another zone, but can still get sunflowers. Do you know of any other flowers that also look really good in a in a in a an arrangement like what you're doing? Oh, yes. I love using status. You can also use yarrow, which Kara has in her farm, and I love it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you don't have Ireland bells, um, I think people where I live love Ireland bells because we have them most of the year. But you can use stock. Mm -hmm. And because I wouldn't use like snapdragons because they are so thin. So we want something that is bulkier. Yeah. That will fill in more space because that will help your flowers stay where you want them. Mm -hmm. And okay, and that's that makes easy. sense. That's something that is actually easy. Like Dion's always saying, anyone can do it. You don't mm -hmm. need to be a floral designer. You don't need to have like all the experience and get scared about it. Mm -hmm. Put some chicken wire, add some water, get some filler. Filler would be like something bulky, something bulky. And the second picture, I, oh, no, they, and always place them at an angle. Don't mm -hmm. place them straight because then you will not be able, like, to fill the base. Always mm -hmm. place them at an angle. And once you have your first base, which is the Sweet Williams or Carnations or Yarrow, mm -hmm. then you add, like, the pointy flowers okay mm -hmm. Arlen, i like arlen bells because the green contrast with the yellow so beautifully i mean this is like my perfect sunflower arrangement mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> pink yellow and green it's, it's like it's a I'm party happy. i'm happy yeah it's a party, yes. it's a party. Vanessa is the one. If you remember, Vanessa was the one that joined us on our Instagram live. She says she's in zone five and she uses Holopsis. Did I say that right? Heliopsis. Yeah. Did I say that right? And it's a perennial. She uses that when she mixes her, when she puts in with her sunflower. So th Vanessa, thank you for that. Um, I look at a sunflower and the arrangements, the bundles, and I just see a party. They're usually used in celebrations and enjoy. And like you said, summertime with the 4th of July coming up for the holiday. I know we're going to see a lot more of those everywhere we turn. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want to take this opportunity with what you said. 
Yes, special occasions always require flowers, always. But you don't need to wait for a special day to get flowers. I mean, if you have flowers every week in your home, I guarantee when you walk into the room that has flowers, you will immediately smile. It Mm -hmm. it, it will be inevitable. You will walk through that room and you will turn to look and you will be like, (sighs) and that pause, it's going to bring so much wellness to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of why Christina's mother was so happy when she was helping with the flowers, because flowers have this energy that they fill you and you're like breathing so much when you're working with them. It's always like, (sighs) (sighs) ah, that's actually what we need. So please send me pictures, do some flower arrangements. Start the summer with a sunflower arrangement and tag us because I would really love to see what you're doing. Oh, so pretty. I would love that too. And I'm going to answer um, Pilar. Pilar, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name correctly, but she said she loves Pilar. the spatula technique. And I just want you to know, yes, I do use uh, I do use the palette nice very often. These are actually my own collection. So I love that technique as well, my friend. And uh, Anna. I love that you said you don't have to have flowers for us. Don't wait for a special occasion. We talk about that. It seems like in every episode, don't we, ladies, where we say, yes, it doesn't matter. I'm not even opposed to grabbing some weeds. It doesn't matter. They're flowers, they're blooms. It's like whatever you have, celebrate it today. It's like, don't wait on the china. Don't wait on the fancy candles. Don't wait to give yourself flowers. Exactly. I love it. Absolutely. Well, ladies, this has been such a fabulous segment. So oh fun. my gosh, it's already been 56 minutes. We've learned a whole lot. The time flies when you're having a good time with flowers and friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've learned a whole lot about building a floral community today. We've learned about sunflowers. Oh, and yes, right there. So you can go to bloomtvnetwork.com and go to the flowers and friends tab. And we actually are going to be doing a giveaway each week. Yes. And you can go to that tab, go to the sign up here for our weekly giveaway. And it is for, let's see here. Yep. We hang on. Sign up and get entered into our weekly giveaway. Be sure to watch Flowers and Friends each week live at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Winners will be announced during the show. So you can enter the giveaway to win a subscription to Bloom TV. And Dion, how about you fill us in on uh, the extra? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I actually also want to be able to be a part of the giveaway. So I will be giving away free paint because I want to do anything I can to encourage you to paint. This is the paint that I use. Um, It's a clay-based paint. It's all natural. There's no VOCs. And this is the stuff that I paint with on my hands, guys. So when I'm doing all my finger paintings, I have no problem with this. I've even been known to put it on my nose, my lips, because, I mean, I really needed to know. Is can I really do that? Right. So I'm yeah. diving right. in and getting my fingers in there. But I'm gonna give away also for the giveaway some free paint. So make sure you get entered to win, my friends. Yes, and please sign up, uh, follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on everywhere on Instagram and Facebook. You can find us at, as Flowers and Friends Talk Show, right? Flowers and Friends screen. underscore talk show. Underscore. Right? talk show Absolutely. and follow us like us i mean we really need your support right now we need you we need you to show up we need you to tell your friends because we have huge plans for this show and this is only going to keep getting better and better and it's thanks to you guys that mm-hmm. this will be a reality so right now we're asking all of you to share about our show to tell your friends to be with us every week because we love that you guys are here and we want to keep growing the joy of living with flowers. And don't forget that we have this beautiful commercial every week for you guys. So don't go anywhere. We want to show you our beautiful commercial. Thank our sponsors as well before we go today. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network. 
bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. Thank you for being with us, you all. You can find it all in one place at bloomtvnetwork.com. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And please be sure to join us next week. Christina, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us. And please, Kara, tell everyone why they need to be with us next week. Because everything is better with flowers and friends. Bye, <laughs>